For nearly 100 years, our company has proudly served military members and their families. The commitment we make to them is a driving force for our innovation. We promise to be there for them in their greatest time of need. What you see here is much more to us than dots on a map. They represent homes and personal effects our members worked hard to call their own. Our 13 million members rely on us to be proactive during catastrophes. One of the ways we do this is by constantly monitoring the weather from several different sources. It's not about what the weather brings, but how it affects our members' lives. Let's look at what's happening now. All morning, we've been monitoring flood warnings and hailstorms on the eastern seaboard. Fortunately, there's not a major catastrophe today. So let's take you back to the Woolsey Fire from last fall, a catastrophe that impacted our members in Malibu, California. This type of peril demands a united front. So the innovation, GIS, and data science teams got together use imagery and remote sensing technology to provide peace of mind to our members who are at risk, impacted, or recovering from a disaster. <clears throat> this type of collaboration isn't new for us. We also participate in a consortium of insurance companies, the Geospatial Intelligence Center, or GIC. Sue, so, let's look at a viewer from the GIC that can help us settle claims faster. We can receive imagery even as the fire burns allowing us a first look at our members' homes. The GIC provides insurance companies with pre- and post-catastrophe imagery, collected by Vexcel. In the image on the left, we can see what the property looked like before the fire. On the right, it's clear this home was affected. Now we need to determine if there are any additional structures on the property that were also damaged. Let's look at these over here. But what are they? This one's still standing, and the other was probably burned? We can use this bottom row of oblique images that provide additional pre-fire views to help us learn more. Let's click on this one. Here we can confirm it was the home and the barn that were burned in the previous image. If we look over here, we see this long white structure that looks like a shipping container, and this, the trailer in front of it that was totally burned. This information is proactively flagged in the member's profile and allows us to speed up the process of paying them once their claim is filed. This is just one of many independent sources that we use to confirm the state of the property pre- and post-catastrophe. This GIC solution can be customized. So let's take a look at how we can take advantage of our own sources of imagery. In the post-fire image on the right, we can see an interesting pattern. There are damaged structures amongst some that appear to be unaffected. In this type of situation, for USAA, one source is not enough. We partnered with DataWing a local aerial data provider to fly in regions with high concentrations of our members. From this view, we can confirm this home was damaged. One thing that's unique about us is that we don't just collect this imagery for ourselves. We share it with first responders during the fire and in real time. In situations like these, we do what we can to help each other. For the Woolsey Fire, we shared this imagery with LA County and CAL FIRE, whose labeling of this property provided us with additional verification. We also received drone imagery from LA County that our adjusters can use as a 3D mesh for a realistic view of the neighborhood and the property. Now that we have multiple points of validation, we can label this as a total loss. We have been able to see what the member cannot, and now we can have our adjuster pay the claim so the member can quickly start rebuilding. This process works well for us with our desk adjusters and for small volumes of claims. But for the Woolsey Fire, we had over 9,000 buildings inside the fire perimeter. Eric, let's show a more scalable solution. Sure. With deep learning, we can train a model to help classify all the buildings in the fire perimeter. The first step is to export our training data, including that from CAL FIRE. This is an ArcGIS notebook, and it's a great tool for us to track all the steps necessary to train and run a deep learning model. But first, we need to augment the training set that we exported from ArcGIS Pro. Using this label data, we can train a deep learning neural network, and we can see that the model will start to converge, in this case, right around 99% accuracy. We can then look at the ground truth labels versus model predictions 
to get a quick qualitative view on how it's performed. We can see the model has correctly classified this home is damaged and this home is undamaged, exactly what we wanted it to do. We can now save the model to make it available to our teams. By running this inside of ArcGIS Enterprise, we can take this to scale. The result is a feature service that we can bring right back into Pro. These are the 9,000 buildings automatically classified using the model. This is the power of deep learning. So let's so go ahead and zoom in and take a closer look. Here we can see the damaged homes are labeled in red and the green homes are still standing. With 99% accuracy, the model is approaching the performance of a trained adjuster. What used to take us days, now we can do in minutes. Now that we understand what is affected, we want to take a look at who is affected. After all, we're in the business of taking care of our membership. So using infographics from business analysts, we can deep dive to a high volume of claims on the coast and see the characteristics of the impacted community. We often deploy mobile response units to these areas. In this Intel report, not only can we discover the number of buildings that have been damaged, but we can also take a look at the at-risk population like the number of elderly or children. As situations are rapidly changing, this intel helps us make decisions faster. A catastrophe we deployed another mobile response unit to was the campfire in Paradise, California. Let's take a look at what we did there. After days of intense destruction, the smoke occlusion made getting useful aerial imagery impossible. But every catastrophe is different, so we adapted. We put boots on the ground and were able to get street views from GeoCam before our members were even allowed to return to their homes. As we pan the image on the left, it's hard to tell what we're looking at. Was that a house, a park? But if we turn on building footprints, we can confirm it was in fact a home. Looking at the other side of the street, we get a sense of why this was one of the most tragic and destructive wildfires California has ever seen. When the smoke finally cleared, we were able to see that not only were properties destroyed, but the entire town was decimated and our members' lives were changed forever. We've shown you several ways we push the boundaries of disaster response and blur the line of what an insurance company should be during a community's greatest time of need. We have a responsibility to our membership and their expectations are changing. We can use this technology to deliver on our mission faster, to protect those who protect us. Thank you.